Unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is Jesus being prophesied of, being called Mighty God. That's crazy. So who is Jesus? I mean, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. He says, I am. And we hear people talk about the way or the truth or the life because they want to find the way in life or they want to know the truth or they want more life. But Jesus saying that I am the way, the truth and the life. But why does he go on and say, no one comes to the Father but by me as if we should already want to get to the Father. Why would he say that? Right there in Genesis, we see God begins to prophesy and speak of a coming savior saying that one day he's going to come and Satan all the curse, all the death, all the sin that you've brought, Jesus is going to crush your head. So if we walk our way through the Bible, what we see is God restoring His presence, God with Adam, to you and I today. It takes place when God shows up to Abraham and says, Abraham, I'm going to bless all the nations through you. What He means by that is through Abraham, through his family, all the way up to today, Jesus Christ is going to come. He speaks to Moses and tells Moses these commandments and each one of these commandments we know we've broken any one of them, we've sinned and we're guilty. Back then for the Hebrews, for the nation of Israel, if they lie, if they blaspheme God, if they worship false idols and the rest of the Ten Commandments, what they had to do was once a year the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies. He would take that sacrifice and petition on behalf of the people that they would be forgiven. We've seen that even when God delivered them from Egyptian slavery, as he sent the death angel down to kill the firstborn, what he told the Israelites to do was to put the blood over the doorpost in the shape of a cross. What is all this about? Jesus was born at a specific time. He fulfilled all these prophecies, every word that was ever spoken from right what we've seen in Genesis 3 to Abraham, to Moses, throughout the pages of scripture was all going to be fulfilled one day when God came in the flesh as Jesus and died for our sins. Who is Jesus? Well, God so loved the world. God so loved you and I. God so cared about the sin that took place in the garden and the curse that's in this world that he sent his one and only son to die to die in our place, to take all the things that I've done that are wrong, to apply them on that cross to himself. He was innocent, beaten, whipped, abused, dies and resurrects just a few days later, proving he overcame death, but not only that, taking all of our sins and fulfilling all those things that happened in the Old Testament. Today you have all kinds of people who debate, well, who is Jesus? Is he God? Is he not? Is he Satan's brother? Is he Michael the Archangel? And in Genesis it says the serpent is the shrewdest of all the creatures that God have made. But yet it says in Colossians that all things on this earth were made by Jesus. So how can Jesus be brothers with Satan if the serpent was created? But yet in Colossians 1 it tells us that Jesus made all. Even to that point in Genesis that God created. So here's God. It says in Colossians, Jesus created, and in the book of Job, it said that the Spirit of God made me. So now we have God creating, we have Jesus creating, and we have the Holy Spirit creating. And what does this mean? There's three parts here called the Trinity, but all of them are united in one, one purpose. God is in heaven. Jesus came to the earth. Jesus actually said, I have to go away to send you another. Yeah, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What does that mean? It means Jesus was operating for God as he walked the earth, as he gave himself, as he walked as a man, as he shed his blood. He spent time with us, among us, but he said, I have to go away. And who was he going away to? He was taken off into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the throne along with God. And who did he send so that he'd never leave us or forsake us? He sent the Holy Spirit, who the Bible says is God. I mean, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Jesus makes a point that before Abraham, thousands of years ago, I am claiming himself to be God. People say, well, he wasn't God. If you look at why the Jews crucified Jesus, we can see that they did it because he claimed to be God. You know, we hear about doubting Thomas all the time. After Jesus had died and rose again, there they are gathered together and Thomas is saying, I can't believe this unless I see Jesus myself. And suddenly Jesus shows up in the room. Thomas puts his fingers in his side and feels the wound. And Thomas says this, he says, my Lord 
and my God. Thomas, a human being, is calling Jesus God. And what does Jesus do? He says, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Jesus is a rabbi. If he just blessed Thomas calling him God, and he's not God, it is sin, and we should throw the Bible away. But the fact that Jesus blesses it tells you that he is God. He is God in the flesh. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There's no other way. I'm sorry, but Jesus is exclusive. You won't get to heaven by believing in some of the God or some of the myth or some of the whatever it is. And Jesus is the name, by the Bible says, by which every person must cry out to be born again, to be saved, and to be forgiven. If you confess Jesus as Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible says that one day every tongue will confess, every knee will bow and say, Jesus is Lord. We live in a world people are afraid to talk about hell, but Jesus talked about hell. We live in a world people are afraid to talk about repentance, and all repentance means is he's told you of this sinful nature like Adam and Eve, and he's called you to turn from it. If we live this life where we acknowledge heaven, we acknowledge hell, and we say, God, I'm turning from my way. I want to be right with you. I want to be forgiven. I know I'm going to die one day. I know you rose again, defeating death, proving you are who you say you are. God, it's you that I pray to in Jesus' name. God, it's you that I worship because I was made to do that, not religiously, but out of a love for him. Because at the end of this life, friend, you and I are going to stand before God. As we turn to Christ, as God speaks to us through a message like this, and as we see our need for Him, it's in the name of Jesus that we can be forgiven, repent, and be born again. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and He is. And He said, no one comes to the Father but by me.